I am an accidental mother. I did not want to be one until ready, and that was a long time coming. I'd refer to mothers as breeders in my 20s, the others. Then my life changed. I met the guy. I made my ovaries sing. He was the man, the one to father my unborn children. And along came Nathaniel. As a woman who was adopted as a teenager, my medical history was one of myth and speculation. Stories of my mother trying to run me over as an infant, I thought to be exaggerations. I tried to be like the others. I nursed, I did infant massages, gymboree. I laughed at the first cues and wonders, and they felt like hollow echoes, shrills bouncing off of a structure foreign even to myself, a voice not my own. I was told it would be okay. It was to be expected at first. Kids aren't easy. My husband worked a lot. It would get better. He'd grow out of it. I wasn't one of those women. But it only got worse. Darker. Scarier. The expectations greater. The cliff higher. I didn't want to die. I wanted to sleep. Soundly. I wanted help not to hurt or to fail. Having lost two of my biological uncles, one to a dive off of Summit Bridge and the other to an overindulgence of aspirin, I just wanted to change. And I did not understand what was wrong with me. The answer isn't at the bottom of a bottle of Clonopin and Prosecco. I remember the detox, the demons coming out of doors like an exaggerated game of whack-a-mole, the sensation of the restraints, praying not to leave my child, and ripping out my catheter to find him. And I did, in my way, in time. It took a while. I had to forgive myself. Several hundred hours of therapy and medication at times too much until I found the balance. And time spent in rooms where my issues were the least of the noise. Did a pathway emerge and a woman walking it stronger and sure. I realized that I suffered through no fault of my own. That I too could coo and speak in a voice that would make my child smile turn to me, see me, not as a failure, but as his mother that I longed to be, but I did just not know how. Five years later, when I had Oliver, I no longer needed gymboree or music classes to learn lullabies. Nathaniel sang to him too, and I was okay not being perfect. My voice was off key, and that was okay. I knew I might need help, and I asked. Now we spend time, a lot, at the park alone, because I can be, playing games of our own making, because we can dream, alone with ourselves, because there is joy there now, and where there is joy, there is hope.